You're good to go. Really what do I care it's not my hotel. With a note to remember. No blow jobs. Detective Hollis Lucchetti receives word from a doctor one sunny afternoon that he has been infertile all his life. This fact becomes an unpleasant problem. The main character has two children. That's why his wife will have to try harder to explain how they could have come from a sterile man. Hollis boss interrupts his musings. He's tasked with to take on a jumper who climbed the street, a high-rise, and is about to jump from there soon. The detective arrives at the building, climbs to the roof and meets potential suicide jumper Kevin Nicholas. Are you married? No. Then why the fuck did you come up here? His radical actions have already attracted a small crowd of onlookers below. So Hollis decides to address this emergency as quickly as possible and tries to get the man to talk. He tells him a little about his long marriage and his Catholic faith. After which he learns that Gavin is an atheist who lives with a gay friend. And all of this is an unplanned attempt to break up his life. So why is it so hard the guy admits to the detective that he's here under duress, and he has no choice but to jump in at exactly 1200. Otherwise someone else is going to die. The story is brought back, and some time back. Gavin lives a measured and routine life. On the same floor as him. Living on the same floor with him is a married couple, Shana and Joe Harris, who have recently moved in. A little later, it turns out that Nicholas's new roommate. Nicholas's new hallway neighbor is new to the hotel where he works as an assistant manager. She lives with her husband Joe in the apartment across the hall from Gavin's. Shayna is a soul musician and loves to practice in her spare time. But, girl is well aware that music alone is hard to make a living, so she came to try her luck at the hotel with her. With her accounting degree, you can start, right what do I care it's not my hotel. Gavin's hiring her, for the job, at home, Nicholas tells his friend Chris about this encounter, and he decides that it is not a coincidence, but a sign. From above. The protagonist brushes Chris' words aside, because Shayna is married. And then the doorbell rings. Harris are invited to dinner with the boys, and they eagerly accept. The next day, Shayna goes to work as a as a maid. The head of security makes us all feel better about the idea of him sleeping here, and Gavin gives her a tour and introduces her to the staff. In the evening everyone comes to the Harris's house for dinner. The girl warmly welcomes the guests, especially Nicholas, who he notices a note of arrogance and coldness in Joe's demeanor. During dinner, Mr. Harris displays his true nature of a Christian, fundamentalist, infantilizing his own wife and trying to correct the orientation of Chris. Not wanting to continue this conversation, the boys thank him for dinner and leave. What unpleasant people are they and the food is so. The food. A little later, Chris changes Kevin's attitude about Shayna. She clearly doesn't support her husband's rhetoric. Before work, no one considers the neighbor's textbook Sessie she gave him early in the morning and begins to understand her a little better. Difficult childhood, did not embitter the girl, but taught forgiveness. With a note to remember. No consent to a blowjob. Young. Get even closer together over dinner together, discussing various things. Gavin admits to the detective that he decided to free Shayna from her oppressor husband the moment John began. Preaching homophobic sayings on par with biblical ones. And this brings back memories of Hollis. Morning visit home, during which he rudely asked his wife who the father of his children was. Nicholas. Continues his story. Soon Joe apologized for this harshness of his remarks and again suggested that Kevin. To meet again for a chat. He did not refuse. That same day, the protagonist shares with Shayna. The details of his failed marriage. You have very sexy lips and deliberately gives a married girl. Compliments to get her interested and it works. One night during Gavin's visit to the Harris's, they are discussing religion. Kevin tries to confront Joe Fixated's belief system of privilege. Christianity by pointing out to him that most people on earth would go to hell, even Catholics, if Joe's faith was credible. He points out that a Chinese child killed in a traffic accident might not even never know about Jesus, so he has no chance of going to heaven. Joe responds that such an example is not proof of God's injustice, but a simple reason why Christians are called to want to call others to the faith. Their discussion escalates into a full-blown argument, which ends when Shana asks the rabbi to leave. The next day, Shana tells the main character about her dark past, which included illegal substances and working as a girl of easy virtue. 
She says that Joe pulled her out of an endless nightmare and saw some good in her, and she will never forget it. The heresists moved to a new church, becoming evangelicals. That means they have to be even more humble and Shana herself has to give up the music she loves. One day he fixes the strings on her guitar, the next he forbids her to play it. The girl is not blind. She understands Gavin's intentions perfectly well and hardly gives in to them. So she asks the guy to stay away from her. He obeys and moves away from her exactly until Gavin has to comfort one of his grief-stricken of his grief-stricken co-workers with a prayer. He poses as a sincere believer, which helps soothe the maid. Gavin and Shayna spend more and more time with each other. And eventually they have an affair. Joe pretty quickly realizes what's what's going on and witnesses their dates. Shayna suspects her husband of knowing about her infidelity, but her lover quickly reassures her. During another date, Nicholas confesses that he had a daughter, whom he lost in a car accident. The tragedy caused his separation from his ex-wife. The girl comforts him and expresses hope that perhaps they will be happier together. Meanwhile, Lucchetti is desperately trying to save Gavin. He tells him about his marital problem, explaining that his wife has committed adultery out of love, out of fear of, of losing her husband. The couple has been trying for a very long time to have a child and Angelo Hollis's wife found out her husband's infertility before he himself. She arranged for their children to look as much like Lucchetti as possible, so she slept with his younger brother. Gavin says it may not be what the detective wanted, but he has children. Isn't that the most important thing? He goes back to his story. Together with Shayna, they decide to tell Joe the truth. But before they do, the girl wants to to make sure her husband doesn't get his hands on himself after the breakup. On the fateful night, Shayna arrives at work and is surprised finds Joe there. In the morning, Harris insists that Gavin join him for a talk. In his apartment, Joe tells Nicholas that he used to have a wife and two children, but he would leave them overnight to buy substances and girls, living his life. He lost his family and nearly died drunk in a ditch when he found the light of God's light. He believes that after God had already given him so much, God gave him Shana to take care of. He Quote Psalm chapter 23 and at gunpoint makes him read Leviticus chapter 2010. If any man commit adultery with another man's wife, his neighbor's wife, let both adultery and adultery be put to death. Givens objects and recounts the New Testament. And adultery, which Jesus saves, commands only the sinless to cast a stone at him. Joe agrees with his argument, but doubts that Nicholas will henceforth be sinless and willing to give his life for his beliefs. The next day, when Shayna is to leave Joe, Gavin, waits for her call. Instead, Joey calls him and orders him to go up to the roof of the building. He decided that the Old Testament was cooler, but instead of killing adultery, he decided to relent and kill one of them. Harris warns that he has his wife at gunpoint and will kill her at 12 o'clock unless Gavin jumps off the building. Take note. Reprimands the man for not telling the detective right away. Then he would have had time to prevent the jump. V. Gavin only responds by telling him that he is focusing too much on the pain of his wife's betrayal instead of the love that moved her. He asks Lucchetti to tell Shayna that he loves her and jumps off the roof of the building. The police find Harris in a hotel room with a direct view of Gavin's suicide. Joe is arrested. Lucchetti relays Gavin's words to Shayna, after which she grieves her loss with Chris. The detective returns home to his wife and children and makes peace with them fulfilling the jumper's last request. It's such a horror. That's okay, we move on with our lives. And that's where this unusual story ends here. Well, for our part, we are once again experimenting with the movies we skip over. Write in the, in the comments. What do you think of these stories? Do you think they should be retold or still leave them for full-fledged viewing? Or would you say they should be retold just so you can to skip the full view? We're really very interested. And, of course, I want to ask you once again to subscribe to the channel. After all, we are very close to our dream of 100,000 subscribers. Because with your support, we're going to be able to reach our dream of 100,000 subscribers. Well, see you soon. Bye.